just a reminder, the Corporate Diary is where um, it's a video and article based blog where I interview women in male dominated fields and talk about what it's like to be a woman in business. Um, I also share my own experiences as uh, as someone who came from management consulting and then now in corporate venture capital, as well as tech incubation, etc. So um, a little bit more about you. I wanted to reach out because um, you're building something incredible called Glimpse. Um, so you have built this new company, a new startup, um, and are also a fellow at YC Combinator where you, I mean, you just went through the seed accelerator that has launched over 2000 companies where Airbnb has come from Stripe, DoorDash, Instacart, uh, you name it. There's just so many incredible companies. So would love to get to know a little bit more about your path. Um, how you built Glimpse, what is Glimpse, and especially in the world that we're living in right now with, with COVID, um, it's, it's interesting to see that you built a business that connects people really well. So can you, in your own words, kind of tell us what Glimpse is? Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, so Glimpse is an app for two-minute video chats. Uh, you match with one of your friends, for two minutes at a time. And then after that one match, you match with somebody else. And then you kind of keep matching over and over again in this chat roulette style, but rather than with complete strangers, it's with friends and friends of friends. Got it. Okay. And how did you come up with this concept? It's kind of a funny story. Uh, we started this, you know, the entrepreneurial journey, building something completely different. We were helping people meet offline. Um, myself and my co-founder really wanted to solve the loneliness epidemic. Um, I dropped out of school early on and found it really hard to transition into this like 10 hour work day uh, and not really having a social life. Um, but just like a 19 year old in the Bay Area, there was not much for me to do. Um, and we started thinking about, you know, what builds authentic relationships and got like deep into research and started building this offline first social network uh, where once a week you would meet um, with someone new, build this whole like psychometric analysis model. Uh, we'd match you on personalities not for dating or networking, just to be friends. Okay. Turns awesome. out people don't want to meet strangers for friends <laughs> or dating. Uh, so that was a hard sell. Um, we worked on that for a couple months um, and then decided to shut that down. Uh, and that was our old company, our old product called Gravitate. Okay. They don't want to meet um, over like a kind of like a face-to-face -face thing or, or chat? It was face-to-face. -face. Okay. Uh, and we wanted to make it as easy as possible to meet up in the real world, okay. um, which isn't easy. Like you like spend, you have to like block out an hour of your week. Uh, you have to get there. Um, and we didn't want to have them spend time on the app. Kind of that like whole hinge vibe of like, I want to build a product where you don't spend any time on it. When you're asking someone to meet a stranger, you do want them to be able to communicate with that stranger. Yeah. Um, which, you know, we didn't want them to do because we wanted them off their screens. Uh, we want to reduce screen time. Yeah. Um, which is kind of ironic because now we're building an app that is like very high on screen time. Um, and that kind of grew out of the old product right. because we, realized we had to really excite people and kind of get them jazzed about yeah. social interaction. And this like two minute format is perfect. Absolutely. I think, and especially now what I hear, okay, when COVID started happening and people were like, wait, now we're going to be working from home during a pandemic. Not only are we working from home, but we can't even leave our apartments or our homes to go socialize. Um, a lot of people were like, I should have bought zoom.us. Like I should have <laughs> bought that stock. I should have bought Cisco's WebEx. And you know, all these stocks were just like going up. And, and then founders or like more entrepreneurial people were like, I should have, I should go into telecommunications and start building something that could compete with that or hinge, uh, Tinder, Bumble. They're, they're now probably going to be all about meeting online. And, and these dating apps are going to take it one step further where they're, um, they're probably going to need to focus on those features where the webcam or, you know, just like those um, chats are going to have to come to life um, in a telecommunications and video conferencing kind of way. But I, I find it very interesting to your point about people not wanting to meet 
in person with strangers. Um, <laughs> when I, I moved to New York City, it's going to be almost a year ago. It's not, it's not even been like a year. And when I first moved here, I was like, I'm in this big city. Yes, I have a couple of friends, but everyone's super busy and flaky. How am I going to make friends? So I went on Bumble Best Friend. And I was just like, hey, want to meet in person? And like, no one wanted to. <laughs> People were like, who's this really weird girl who has no friends? Um, but if you have these very genuine chats and like screen type of conversations where you screen the person, um, no pun intended, <laughs> to then meet in person, you're, you're, you're building that almost uh, like a warm lead to then wanting to meet them in person and and going to like do an activity because you can always just chat with them over like, you know, just like what we're doing right now over the screen. Yeah, exactly. And we find that when we introduce the two minute angle and the time boxing of it, it makes it even more exciting. Yeah. Like I can see somebody, but then you always end up with that awkward, like, okay, I, I have to go now. Uh, bye. <laughs> and kind of have an excuse. Um, but we provide that both for like somebody you don't know, but then also for your friends. Um, there's been many times when like, I don't know, I'm like busy coding and I get a call and I have to reject it because I have to focus. Uh, and I don't want to like dive into this rabbit hole of like one hour like gossip session or something. Right. But if I knew it was like a glimpse call uh, and I can kind of time box it and like go in with the right expectations, it's a completely different mindset. Um, and it makes, you know, your friends more reachable. It helps you maintain your relationships better. Yeah. That's really interesting also in the world of content because I've been thinking about Quibi um, and there's so many ads for Quibi now of like these very short um, snippets of content. And so when you think about Glimpse, that's also how we communicate where to your point, like you're busy, everybody's busy um, and you just want to say hi, you want to have that little instant connection of if we were to be working um, together in an office, I could just say, I could, you know, go past your cubicle and be like, hey, what's up? How's it going? And then move on with my life. <laughs> it's just hallway conversations. And like, yeah. we're missing out on all of that. And that's like, I don't know, if you're thinking about like what builds strong relationships and like friendships in the long run, it's two things. It's one, um, vul like reciprocated vulnerability. Uh, and then, you know, through that you need like authenticity. But the other one is like repeat interaction. And like, you need like these short snippets of repeat interaction, um, which is often why you're like best friends with your like, college dorm room and halls because you just see them all the time yeah uh, and missing all of that right now for sure um i'd love to chat about why combinator uh yc is incredible and congratulations i mean you went to um the you were in the january to march 2020 so just now like just a month ago you came from that how was that process how did you um yeah, how did you get into YC? <laughs> how was that? Um, so I remember when we applied, we had nothing. Um, it was just my co-founder and myself with just a ton of passion and excitement. We had a spreadsheet where at the time we were like helping people meet offline. We had a spreadsheet with all this data where we were, you know, hand matching people essentially and showing that, hey, we have traction. This is exciting. Um, and I asked our partner after we got in, I was like, why, why did we get in? Like, this is kind of, like we had a spreadsheet, you should have waited. So did you like, apply to YC, like you applied to YC and, and that was it or who kind of applied? The process is pretty extensive. Uh, you like fill in this like um, long application where, I mean, it's everything from like your business model to like TAM, like just everything, uh, which is really <laughs> a good practice. Even if we got rejected, like um, just like help us get our ducks in a row. Um, yeah. When we got in, um, it was pretty obvious that they didn't like our original idea um, <laughs> after speaking with our partner. <laughs> but they, they loved us and our passion. And I think like that is what YC is looking for. It's like they're looking for people more than the idea. Um, and really with all of their mentorship and guidance and like learning from other founders, um, we were really able to like took what we like had built and like evolve that into what we have now, uh, which is so much better than what we started out with. Yeah. Do you fear... As a founder, you know, you're, you're going into this seed accelerator that has supported and, and is in many ways, um, why, like it's a platform for, that has launched Airbnb, that has launched DoorDash, like all these incredible companies that we think of today as like, wow, like I, I just get chills thinking about being in a room 
um, of people that are going to be mentoring me who have mentored those kinds of companies and have allowed well have supported that kind of success. Mm -hmm. Do you did you kind of go in fearing that you would come out um, with a different product? Or were you kind of open to your product being malleable? Like, where do you draw the line between like, I'm very passionate about like this, like my product, something an, an idea that I have versus like, how do I give my baby away to other people who I, I know are going to inform me of better ways to improve it, yet I need to be true to myself. Hmm. I mean, I think that that question of itself applies to any like mentorship situation uh, of like people will only give advice like with their limited context and YC partners have a ton more context than most people mentoring. Yes. Um, but even within that, it's like you're hearing contradictory advice from every partner and all the startup advice is like, it seems like it's generic, but it's in reality, like this specific company at this specific time in their growth plan. Um, so it's more about like, how do I like take in all of this and then build my own product at these and the thing that you said about um, like giving away your baby, that's definitely very hard. Um, I've been like building apps for the longest time and I like love building things and I love the fact that it's my own and then um, bringing in all these other opinions is hard, but it makes it so much better. Um, and so it's important to listen. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's great. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you um, and it's more related to your background. I know that you were at Duke University and you double majored. Is that correct? You were double majoring in global health and software engineering? Yes. It's a stretch to say I double majored because that implied that I completed this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, getting to that, um, <laughs> what, what kind of led you to make that decision of, hey, you know what, I, I have these, I'm, I'm double majoring in these <laughs> two incredible fields, but... I'm going to go join a startup and I'm going to go um, that route and, and leave school. Yeah. I'd say a lot of things factored into it. Um, one of the biggest ones was I was splitting my time in so many different ways and probably putting 150% into academics, into clubs, into hackathons, uh, into kind of starting side gigs left and right. Yeah. And I recognized that I couldn't do any of them as much like as well as I wanted to. And I felt like I was wasting my time on classes. Um, and <laughs> that sounds awful. Like I love school. I love learning. Like uh, I, but I love teaching myself things and like learning by doing. Um, and I found that every class would kind of end with an A at the end rather than with something, you know, with value uh, or with more gravity. Um, and that just got really frustrating. Um, Cause I would like pour my heart and soul. And then, like, <laughs> It's like, I built this whole model for, you know, detecting sexual assaults on campus. And then now I have to, you know, go build another thing for another class um, rather than seeing something through. Um, and it started as like, a, okay, I'm kind of just done with this like rat race. Um, and everyone is kind of just like stuck in this channel of like, oh, I'm going to study these things and then go into consulting and then do this and this and that. Um, and nobody kind of questioned anything. Yeah. Uh, and someone who's like innately curious it's like the fact that you're not questioning this path uh just you know makes me want to question it more right. um i left initially to join this startup as an intern and then about a month later they gave me a full-time offer and i was just like yes sayonara dude um <laughs> <laughs> okay maybe there was a little more thought <laughs> but uh, in hindsight it was super quick <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's funny, actually. Uh, it reminds me of my sister when um, she was older. She's older. And so um, we both studied. We both went to McGill University and we were both in the management program for business. And I remember when she graduated, I was like, do you miss school? Like, what's the transition like? And she's like, no, I not only work, but I get paid to work <laughs> versus like in school, you know, <laughs> you're just like, studying but like and you're working really hard but um at least you can go shopping when <laughs> no job. so yeah, yeah. <laughs> that always stuck with me I was like hmm. <laughs> um, one of my last questions is is related now to to being a woman and and I guess it's not really the corporate world but um you're a founder now and uh you're in San Francisco you've been working with some of the most again influential partners and mentors 
There are um, in, in tech today. So what can you say about your journey or your role as a woman? How has that shaped um, or not shaped your, your trajectory? Mm -hmm. It's hard to say because it's the only life I've known. Um, but I think I was very lucky in growing up in the Bay Area um, with a very supportive community where, you know, like being a woman in tech, like there weren't many, but there were like all these really strong communities that like were pushing me forward. And were like, this is fantastic, keep doing that. Um, and all that like positive affirmation was definitely valuable. Um, but I did recognize very early on that like I was never gonna be in a room that was like female dominated. Uh, like my first internship in high school, I worked at this like cloud security company and it was all working with men. I think there was like one other female software engineer in the entire company. And I was like, okay, like, this is my new reality. Let me like prove them all wrong and like get more women in tech. Um, and then, I mean, the drastic, you know, gender disparities in like CS classes um, was pretty significant. Um, and just the imposter syndrome is something that's always talked about. Um, and, but I think all of that in like the tech world is one thing, but then like being a founder is like a whole nother level. Uh, I remember, YC batch kickoff. Like I looked around the room, I was like, I can like on one hand count the amount of women in this room. Um, and like, that was terrifying. Um, and our partners are men and I'm getting advice from people who aren't like me. And then when I'm, you know, pitching my company to VCs, like they don't look like me. Uh, and they are definitely like looking for specific characteristics and types of people. Um, but at the same time, it's like, it just makes me work harder uh, and be more prepared for questions. Um, okay. So. Yeah. Oh, that like hit my stomach. <laughs> uh, okay. My last question, and this is not something that I've asked yet, but I've been pondering a lot about is what would you want to change about um, women in, in the corporate world or like in the world that you're in, whether that's how they interact amongst themselves, uh, whether it's the way that they're um, like representation or diversity. Um, I don't know, like, I'll leave that up to you. But what, what is something that you that you'd want to change and that you hope to see change in in a couple of, of years when looking back? Mm -hmm. Ooh, I have so much power. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I mean, I think something I love about you know, all the women entrepreneurs, especially like the ones that are in YC, like we have this WhatsApp group that's just so powerful. And like all these online groups that are really, really strong. Um, and those are so much stronger than like any other like online community I'm a part of that end up having like, you know, like posts that are not really read or like low engagement, but these are like high engagement. People are super supportive. Um, and that's something like I love already and I want to keep seeing stronger. Um, one thing I want to change, I think there's like this like growing wave of like VCs that are backing women founders and like women only VC firms. Um, but at the same time, a lot of them don't have funding. Uh, and yeah. it seems to be this like, like kind of fake cover and like good PR kind of thing. Um, and I mean, I don't know all the factors that lead into that. Uh, and I guess I would want to see those grow into like funds with actual money um, backing more and more women founders. That's an, that's an amazing response. Yeah. That, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, especially like what you said about VC and, and a lot of VCs that from a PR standpoint, they're kind of like, we only back, uh, mm -hmm. women founded companies or like at least one of your co-founders has to be a woman. Um, but if you compare those funds, um, to others, it, it actually may not even be helpful towards those uh, female founded companies. Um, and so if we were to find a way to support those funds um, and the female founded companies, then there would be a win win. I don't know if mm -hmm. I'm trying to like think of, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of, of like, uh, from like a VC lens. It's, it's interesting because when I speak to my friends who are not in corporate VC, but actual traditional VC, they're like, well, a lot of female only type of VC funds 
are not inclined to succeed because um, of the diversity of the per portfolio, right? So you're almost diluting your chances of, of succeeding um, because you're so focused on, on that gender lens versus taking a business and seeing the probability of success from like a, like a true business standpoint. So I, I don't know the answer. Um, it, it would be interesting to see though, how that can change. And I, I do see it changing in the future.